In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a pipeline created for a Java application. It's a Maven based application that you see on the screen right now. And how do you find out this is a Maven based application is typically you would find a file by name pom.xml. This is the metadata file. This has the build. It's like a make file for a Java application, which uses Maven as a build tool. In this directory, there is a source code as well. This is the actual Java code written. And to build this application, since Java is a compiled language, you need a compiler. And uh, the build tool that is used here is called as Maven, which takes care of dependency management and uh, defines how to build that application. And um, this is where I have set up Jenkins. Jenkins is now the most popular continuous integration tool. And this is how a Jenkins UI looks like once you're logged in. I'm logged in as a DevOps user, which you can see on the top right corner of, um, you know, of this window. And uh, this is my project build, you know, jobs here. And these three jobs I have created for the same Java application here, because I want this Java application to be compiled first. That is my build job. Then I also want to run some unit tests on top of that. And once the tests are fine, and only if the tests pass, I would want to go ahead and package that application to create an artifact such as this. This is a jar file. That's the output of um, compilation and build process. But I want this to be created and published only if the build is fine. That is it get compiles fine. And then the tests also run successfully. Now I'll just walk you through these jobs right now. And uh, these are the three jobs we have. So I'm going to begin with build job here. And uh, this is how a job page looks like. So on the left hand side, you see the last successful runs or last run. That's a build history successful or failed. You will see that as part of the status here. All of these are blue dots, which means it's been successful. If it fails in between, you will see uh, it will appear here as a red dot. Uh, these are a lot of configuration and status um, options that you see on the left hand side for each of the job. I will just walk you through the configuration quickly for this particular Jenkins job. So this is a build job with a Maven project. So there are different types of jobs you could create with Jenkins. This is a Maven job. And what I've defined here is which GitHub project this job represents. And the source code management is where again, the GitHub repository actually, uh, if you have a private repository, you can provide credentials here. And then how does this build get triggered on what trigger actually it runs. So I have defined a trigger where it act where it exposes this source code management system, which is GitHub. Every two minutes, you can define the schedule here. There are many ways to trigger this job apart from just pulling this source code management system. You could also have, let's say, your GitHub repository uh, automatically trigger this job using something called as a webhook. Generally, that is part of your repository settings. If you go to the repository configurations, you'll typically see something called as webhook. And you can also trigger it through this. This is one way of uh, triggering and you can then go ahead and configure, you know, another option from the build triggers. You can also just define this build to be triggered, you know, at a particular interval. And uh, there are many options you can possibly use here. I'm just walking you through very quickly. So um, let's look at the uh, next section, which is about the build job. This is where the build step is. Since this is a specialized job to build a Maven application, it automatically picks up the pom.xml. You have to just provide the path if it is inside a directory and define the goal. This is a Maven project. So Maven takes a goal such as compile, package, test, and so on. And then that's it. So that's the configuration for this job. And uh, I have created two more jobs which are very similar except for possibly the build um, uh, goals and um, the way they get triggered. That's the only difference between these three jobs that you see here. And uh, not only have, have I created these jobs, I have created a pipeline out of this. This is how a pipeline looks like. A pipeline is nothing but a sequence in which these jobs should be executed. So I want the build to run first then comes the test, then comes the package. Uh, 
and this has been integrated with the source code here so whenever i make a change um, git has been integrated with jenkins so if i make a change and commit it should automatically trigger this pipeline within two minutes that is my current configuration and that's what i'm going to show you here so i'm going to go to this worker application and um, you can also see the status of the build whether it is passing or not right here i'm going to make one change to this readme file what you see here is just a readme file and i'm going to edit this you can edit it and commit and uh, push to the git repository or you can do that through this web ui as well and I'll just add one more line here. That is my change one. Um, just making a simple mock change so that the pipeline gets triggered. That's my only purpose for adding this uh, line here. And once this has been done, I could go back to the Jenkins console and just wait for uh, a couple of minutes. It should trigger within two minutes. So it might happen within a few seconds or it might take up to two minutes for this job to trigger. And that's my first jobs configuration. I have also added um, on the right hand top corner, there is an option which says disable auto refresh. If I want to see the progress when it happens, when it gets triggered, I also need to enable the auto refresh here. And that's what I've done. And all I need to do now is just wait up to two minutes. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I will be fast forwarding till the build job gets triggered. All right, and the build has been triggered. If I want to see what's happening with the logs, I uh, could go to the console and check that as well. I would show that to you after this pipeline is finished. So the first job is finished. That's why I see this being green. What you see as uh, in blue is yet not been run. And if you see it being yellow, that is currently in progress. So it has triggered the test job and that's what is running right now, which is finished as well. And after this, it is going to trigger the packet job. So in a few seconds, once it refresh, you should see this particular job, third job being run. That's what you see now. There you go. This job has been finished as well. And uh, what is also interesting to know is only if build finishes fine in green, test will run. Only if test uh, is finished successfully, package would run. Let's have a look at the package job here. And if I go here, it has already built an artifact as well. So it has gone from this source code repository to a binary that is this artifact which is a jar file and this is an artifact that i can take up and just run along with java uh, to run or to launch this application now let's have a look at the console output as well which is nothing but the log and this is what happened during the build of this particular job so it pulled the source code from the repository it has been configured to pull it from this repository and it looks at any changes you know and it finds that change um, the line that i added and the commit message for that is here and then accordingly it starts building and the actual build happens with maven as a build tool and this is an output of maven package and it says build successful and it has generated the artifact which has been archived and all of this is a configuration that you can create and this is how you build pipelines with Jenkins and trigger them automatically and this is just you know one feature of Jenkins you can do a lot of things with it you can integrate Jenkins with a lot of different tools you can add plugins and uh, those are the configurations that you would typically find on the Jenkins manage page here before closing the demo though I would want to show you what happens if one of the jobs fail so let's go and look at the pipeline again this time i have introduced some errors and as you notice the second job which is test job has failed here now let's observe what happened the first job in the pipeline the build job has been successful 
So it triggered the second job, which is test. This failed. So it stops right here, the pipeline itself. And this is the use of, you know, sequencing this into a pipeline. Because when things go wrong, you want to just stop right there, fix the issues and then move forward with the next step in this pipeline. Again, I have created one more error this time. This time the build job should fail. And if it fails right here in the first job itself, it should not trigger the second or the third, even the test job with the Jenkins pipeline and Jenkins itself works. Now, if you want to get started with continuous integration, Jenkins is a definite tool that you should start learning about. And this was a quick demonstration of it.